sound speeds. And whether your microphone is a boom or a lav or anywhere in between, there's a lot of factors we have to be aware of when we are trying to get great sound. One of them is wind protection. Now, in this video, we're going to be discussing lav microphone wind protection. No, I'm not using a lav. I don't know why I'm touching my chest. In this video, we're going to be testing a whole bunch of competitors in the world of lavalier wind protection. Now, I could have taken a lav, held it up in the air, and started to blow on the thing and seen how it sounds. But that's not very accurate. What kind of test is that? So what I did is I took a case and I put some Dr. Scholl's mole foam padding, which is pretty thick stuff, on to the front of that and that's going to simulate the soft skin that you would put it on if you're trying to get it right in the sweet spot on someone's chest that's going to be a pretty good simulation of it wind is going to come out of a box fan it's going to blast it and it's going to spread out the same way as it does when it hits an actor's chest now keep in mind this is just direct straight on wind this is not coming from the sides it's not coming from the back or anything else it's just from coming from one angle if you're not familiar with the way something works don't hesitate to ask either in the comments below or ask your favorite sound vendor sound utility boom up whatever the case may be they're going to give you some advice that's going to help you to actually use products correctly and you don't want to use them incorrectly because it could sonically change the tonal quality of your sound not asking means that you're going to try to trial and error or figure it out maybe never figure it out the exact right way to use it and usually it's just a little tweak of something and suddenly it works beautifully and most products are that way they're designed to be very intuitive now we're not testing everything today i'm only testing a bunch of products that we happen to have available when i say we i mean our friends at gotham sound in atlanta they provided most of the supplies that we're using in our testing today and we had a lot of them so the microphone is on the mole skin and there's a box fan blasting the microphone but how how can we tell how fast the wind is going? Well, very simple. I set up an anemometer. An anemometer measures the wind speed. And in our purposes today, we're going to be using miles per hour, even though I probably should have been using knots. So once the wind protection is properly installed on the microphone, I'm going to turn on the fan and slowly start bringing it in until that wind noise is overpowering the wind protection and it starts popping that microphone. At that point, I'm going to look at the anemometer and see what the reading is. Keep this in mind. There is no perfect wind protection. If you add just a little bit of wind protection, it's going to remain low profile, but it's not going to be nearly as effective as some of the bigger, bulkier ones that are blocking out a lot more wind. So keep that in mind. Some of the bigger ones might sonically change and muffle the sound just a little more than the lighter ones. But if you have heavier wind out there, you definitely need to amp it up to make sure that it doesn't pop your mic. So let's start with the Senken COS 11 bare and exposed to the world and start blowing wind at it. Freeze. Barely popping the mic right there. It starts popping at around 1.3 miles an hour. It did a pretty decent job of resisting wind up to that point. Now, I want you to note that my wind is only coming in from this one direction. So this is going to function as a control for us. When I added my shirt, it increased the wind protection to about 2.6 miles per hour. That's an increase of about 1.3 miles per hour. Now, all shirts are not created equal. Some shirts are going to be lighter or denser or scratchy, as you know. So keep these in mind because you may be looking at a shirt and thinking, okay, so about 1.3 miles per hour, it may be less. It could be more. You don't know. The best wind resistance usually happens when you have a pocket of air underneath some sort of protective layer. That pocket of air is not going to move a whole lot. So the fact that I take it out of the shirt for all the rest of the tests here should just be a bare bones test to see which is more effective. But it will be different and results will vary depending on the shirt you throw over it. So first up, we're going to try the small windscreen specifically made for the COS 11. When we blow wind on it, it doesn't take very long for the microphone to start popping. As a matter of fact, it's popping at 1.3 miles per hour, the same as if it doesn't even have a windscreen on there. I'm sure they're a lot more effective if you put them under a shirt, though, because it's going to have that little pocket of air we mentioned. But for a bare, open to the elements test, it doesn't actually seem that effective. For this test, we're using the Ursa Strap Moleskin, which is kind of cool. It's a little more stretchy and it has lines on the back that allow you to cut it a little more straight. But I decided I was going to put a piece of that over the top of the metal windscreen just to see what would happen. As you can imagine, it did muffle the sound. This is the Fidelity before I had the Moleskin. 
This is the fidelity after the moleskin. And it only increased the wind protection by about a fifth of a mile per hour. In my opinion, that's not really worth the sonic loss. Next up, we have the Wind Bubble by Bubble Bee. They come in one, two, and four packs and in assorted different colors. Now keep in mind, there is a cage on the inside that helps to create a little air pocket around the microphone itself. And that right there is something is very delicate. You do not want it to crush. If it gets crushed, it's not going to be nearly as effective as wind protection. Now, this wind bubble was quite effective in my testing. It got up to about four miles per hour and sometimes it popped, sometimes it didn't. When I got into post, I realized that some of the sounds that I thought was the microphone getting hit by the wind ended up not being. It ended up being building rumble. So I kind of want to revisit this one again sometime in the future just to make sure I have a fair testing result, even though four miles an hour is quite effective for our test. Next up, we have the LMC Corporation 4S Furry Mount. Now, keep in mind that when you insert it into the LMC mount, you have to make sure that the element goes all the way through to the very end of it, because if not, sonically, it's going to sound like garbage and it's not going to do you any good. Wind protection wise, it started popping around 3.3 miles per hour. Next up, we have the Rycote Undercover, which is a low profile solution while remaining acoustically transparent, which is a great combination considering that it's able to block out winds up to about 3.1 miles per hour. Finally, we tried the right coat over cover with the fur on top, and it proved to be effective to about four miles an hour. Now, if you look at it, you'll notice that the fur was actually installed in an upside down. I don't know where my brain was. I was looking down on it, didn't bother to stretch up and look over the thing. <sighs> Where's my brain? So I'm going to have to revisit this one again. So I'll probably put it and the wind bubble and one product I was not able to test, but I'm going to test next time, which is the Bubble Bee piece of fur. I'm going to make a rig out of that. And we're going to test those three things together. But as for the wind protection that we use today in our test, here's the results of the test. Some of them are low profile. Some of them are bigger and block out more wind. Regardless, each one of them is effective. And I strongly recommend you trying them to see which ones you like best. Thank you again to Gotham Sound Atlanta for hosting us today and stay with us because in the future we'll bring you some more sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.